Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the American Doofus Show. I'm your host, Barry Welsh. Don't be a doofus. You can uh, message the show at uh, americandoofus at gmail.com or you can message me at uh, American Doofus on Facebook. Please subscribe and, of course, uh, feel free to share the video. Been a quiet couple of nights in Kenosha, Wisconsin after a horrific event. A 17-year-old decided he was going to be judge, jury, and executioner, and we've talked about that. Peaceful nights in Louisville the past couple of nights as well. And um, people are in Washington, D.C. for the Million Person March, commemorating the uh, anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King's I Had a Dream speech. We'll be following that tomorrow and uh, what happens out there tonight. This is a follow-up to uh, a previous episode. Um, had a gentleman named Chris on who uh, is passionate that he believes Grandmaster Jay is an agent and the NFAC is a uh, government operation. Uh, so I gave him his voice. I wanted to listen to that side. Uh, this is a follow-up on that. Um, I've never told anyone to uh, join the NFAC or uh, follow Grandmaster J. And I've never told anyone not to um, follow Grandmaster J or join the NFAC. That's, that's each individual's um, that's each individual's choice, and uh, this is just about giving information. Uh, I'm going to try to have Chris back on. He's got a couple of more points that we didn't have time for in the uh, first episode, so we'll see if we can make that work. But a couple of things that, that he did say that I want to touch on. Um, he talked about uh, Grandmaster Jay not having proficiency in guns, and... Uh, I can, I can see that as a possibility from some of the videos I've seen, but to me that's when you get 3,500 people around you, uh, 500 people, uh, however many as I've said in a previous episode, the NFAC al has always shown up with enough, and, and that's really the only number that matters. Now, um, are some of the people that are very proficient and very good with guns Leaving the NFAC, I don't know. If so, that, that could be a potential problem. But that was one of the issues Chris brought up. Another thing he brought up was that uh, the, the Black Messiah. And uh, uh, is it possible the government is behind that? Um, yes, it's possible. But I feel Grandmaster Jay said that uh, he was the one. Uh, I said it because he said it, I, I feel. He said it because he believes it, and he said it more in spite of the government instead of at the government's request. Uh, could I be wrong? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, because it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility, especially with uh, things the government's done in the past. Now, do I believe Grandmaster Jay is the Messiah? Uh, no, I don't. Um, I don't believe he's the second coming of Christ. Um, I believe that will be a person that, uh, I do believe it will be a person of, of color um, with curly hair. And that's just because uh, uh, the, the, one, the one time the Bible uh, talks about Jesus, it's, it's that he had uh, curly hair like cotton. So, uh, and if you do, any science at all as far as anthropology um, the people in in that region of that time were people of color so that's that's what Jesus is going to be when he comes back and and it's not going to be what the, the European artists of the uh, uh, 17 1800s and on up through the, today have, have depicted Jesus to be and a lot of white people are going to be shocked um, a lot of Christians are going to be shocked when they find out that uh, the Bible says, uh, Jesus says, your sins are forgiven and sin no more. Uh, a, lot, a lot of Christians use uh, the healing and forgiveness of Jesus as a free pass. And, and uh, 
that's sad. Um, the other main point that uh, that Chris made was that this is for information gathering. Um, if they're legal gun owners, the, the government's got the information on them already. And uh, any militia, um, in any militia, the leader of the militia is going to have the information on, on the members. And it's a matter of trusting the leader. And that's, that's what this is going to be come down to, as it does with any militia. A uh, 17-year-old uh, killed two people, as I said, made himself uh, judge, jury, and executioner. A lot of people say he's a hero. Uh, that's a sad, sad statement on the state of the world. But it also shows how dangerous uh, those people are. Um, I think that 17-year-old uh, is probably considering ratting some people out, snitching, uh, whatever you want to call it, because uh, he's going to have to make some negotiations to not be tried in as, as an adult. So. Anytime you join a militia, black, white, brown, yellow, green, purple, um, you're, you're doing it with trust. And uh, all this show's about is, is just giving different sides and uh, not telling you what to do uh, ever, but giving information so that uh, people can make informed decisions. Now, is it possible that, that Jay uh, is an agent? And the NFAC is a government operation. Yes, I have to say it is possible. Is it fact? Um, I can't say that. Time will tell if that's the case. Um, again, back to that the 17-year-old. And um, uh, one thing Grandmaster Jay has stressed about the NFAC is the importance of cohesion and following orders and... and um, not making mistakes and uh, that 17 year old kid went out on his own he wasn't with uh, other members of the militia he made mistakes and those mistakes impacted the lives of the people he shot impacted his own life and since he's 17 years old and his mom bought him the gun and took him to the event uh, it's probably going to impact his mom's life eventually um, so we're we're in a incredibly dangerous incredibly dangerous times september 5th coming up i, I mentioned the uh million person march going on tomorrow um that means eight days until september 5th and uh, the kentucky derby uh, the nfac um, thousands of protesters all in Louisville, and um, I've also been advised to take a look at somebody called the Angry Viking, and uh, the Angry Viking and, and his, I don't know if he has a militia, I don't know, but supposedly there are going to be thousands of followers of the Angry Viking coming to Louisville. Um, with everything that's been going on, uh, with Luz and Kay, my my partner, my producer, my cameraman, the person that that basically founded the show. Um, I've had some things to deal with, plus Kenosha, plus um, uh, just I haven't had a, I haven't had time to find out about this angry Viking, but I've had a lot of uh, a lot of people asking about it, and I, and I will. Uh, we'll look in and see what I think and, and give my opinion. I'll, I'll take a closer look at it. I've had people ask me, I had people ask me if I was going to the Million Person March. And uh, that wasn't ever really an option for me. Uh, I've had people ask if I'm going to be in Louisville on uh, September the 5th. And uh, since I lost Kay, um, I wouldn't have anybody to to have my back or, or have my back while I'm filming or interviewing and um, or, or to be a support. Um, plus I don't have any body armor or a Kevlar helmet at the moment. I've got the respirator, I've got the goggles, I've got, but uh, 
chances are I will not be in Louisville. Um, I'll be watching like millions and millions of other people, and it's amazing to me the number of the number of people that aren't informed, the number of people that have no idea what could potentially happen in Louisville on September the fifth, um, with all the with all the varying factions. Um, at the same place at the same time, not to mention law enforcement and, and probably the National Guard. Um, would I like to be there? Yeah, it's history. We're living history now. Some, someone wrote me and, and uh, it really, I felt this but I haven't really said it. Uh, we're living history right now and we're living in an incredible time of history. And uh, I, th I thank you all for watching and, and because I feel like that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm reporting on history, and uh, it's an amazing honor that that so many of you, uh, so many of you are watching. And I, I really, honestly, I, I thank you. Um, I go through and read comments, but uh, I don't comment back. And uh, you know, there's, there's an equal balance of of support and hate. <laughs> and I've had I've had a few. I've had a few threats and I've had a few um, uh, messages that I'm protected. Um, it seems that it started out as, as uh, I was viewed as just another cracker and then it was um, keep an eye on the American doofus because uh, it might be dangerous. I'm not dangerous, um, not at all. I'm, I'm a peace-loving person. I do have guns, but it's not because I'm looking to ever kill anybody. Um, it's a dark world we live in. Uh, we all need to try to be a light, in my opinion. Um, as I said, I've lost K, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I've, I've put my cash app in the description and uh, it's just because I've had some people ask you know if they can support the show and you sure can. I'm not going to be talking about it, I'm not going to be asking or begging for donations. Um, with Kay gone, half the income of the household's gone and uh, um, all the expenses are still there plus some extra ones currently. So uh, that's why I'm putting the cash app up. If it, if for some reason that offends you, I do apologize, and that's not the intent. It was just because uh, some people asked uh, if they could help and asked me to to put an app up. So um, th that's why it's there. Um, it it's a dark world. Uh, it can be a lonely world. It can be a scary world. Um, we live in troubling times. And the more we talk and the less we shoot, the better off we are. Uh, I've been talking about, I've been talking with some people about coming on the show, about contributing anonymously uh, what they know through uh, medium and uh, I've been asked to be on a couple of shows and we're talking about possibly doing that. Because the more we can share, the more we do share, the more we we communicate, the better chance we have for understanding. If, if we automatically hear something that we don't like and we just shut the rest of it off, um, sometimes we might miss something that we need to hear. So try to keep an open mind, try to communicate with each other. Uh, fellow white people, keep talking to the white people. Um, there are some we're never going to reach. There are some that we need to reach because they don't have understanding, because they don't have knowledge. And fear and ignorance and uh, hate um, can really destroy lives, as we saw in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and that 17-year-old. I don't say his name. I know his name. I've seen it. I watch a whole bunch of videos so that so that you all don't have to watch them all, uh, and I and I pick out what I what I feel like you would want to see. 
and uh, I don't do I, I there are videos I haven't I haven't put on here because I don't do gore this isn't this isn't a channel about um, how much bloodshed we can we can get on YouTube uh, this is this is just the opposite actually it's let's stop the bloodshed and, and spend some time talking with each other on YouTube or on in person or on zoom or or wherever the more we talk the better off we are talking so much better than shooting and uh, if we keep heading in the direction we are that's what it's going to be there's going to be shooting there's not just going to be an occasional shooting there's going to be massive shooting and uh, I personally don't want that for this country and I hope you don't either um, it's a world of darkness. Be a light. I'm Barry Welsh. It's the American Doofus Show. Don't be a doofus. Take care of yourselves. Please stay alive.